Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 40, 27 through 31. This is my Chevy Cobalt. I'm looking at the driver's side rear tire here. And I've been smelling gas in the garage and finally got around to looking underneath here. And I noticed that I have a little puddle here on the floor. It looks like it's coming from a gas line. Okay, so I ended up putting a couple of jack stands under here to make things safe. And it's important when you're working with uh, gasoline where there's a possibility of uh, sparking, you want to disconnect the negative battery cable. It's a 10 millimeter nut on there. So it looks like the source of the leak is here, uh, or is dripping here, dripping off of there. When I came on here earlier, this little thin line here, which I'm assuming is not the gas line, uh, probably a brake line, um, was also wet. So I'm thinking these rusty culprits right here are the gas lines. It looks like I have other spots along the line here. Comes along here. And there's also rust on this part too, so probably need to replace the whole gas line. Okay, and here you can see a pretty good view of fuel lines go. That's the leak spot. Oops, right over there. And they I'll go up across the car and all the way up to the front of the car to the engine. Okay, and on the front comes up here, curves up here, and then runs along. Looks like the firewall. Okay, so the fuel lines are coming up into the engine compartment. The yellow tag is coming up. And Blocked by the heater hoses here. Hopefully you can see the tag there. So it comes up and then it joins this braided hose right here. It comes up here and goes up onto the fuel rail. There. It's the other line is this one here. This evap line for the perch valve here. I am trying to determine how to get this gas line off. There's a metal clip right here that just pulls off like so. And actually before I did that I already checked to make sure I took off this um, the Schrader valve here, and uh, since I had a leak on the gas line, I didn't figure there would be any pressure here, but I just double-checked that. I covered that over with a rag and, and just uh, depressed it with a screwdriver, and sure enough, there was no pressure there, so that's not a worry if I truly didn't have a gas line leak, and I pressed that, you know, gas would shoot out, which would be a problem. So, And then this one I did... This is kind of a double double clip arrangement. I just had to pry that loose. There's like a couple of different tabs here and then there's another hook there that you have to loosen. And then there's another one here. So I'll take that one apart as well. Okay, so I opted to buy a pre-made set of lines and I got these at it was lines to go or something like that website. I looked up 2009 Chevy Cobalt. And mine has the fuel fuel filter, so I got that uh, set. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out how these uh, clips that hold the gas lines come off, and 
these right here are pretty straightforward. They just, uh, these little tabs here just pop up like that. Okay, these clips were kind of a puzzle to me, so maybe I can save you a little heartache if you happen to need to do this. So first thing to do is clean all the mud out of there so that you can see uh, what to do. But there's a clip right here that you have to pry over and obviously you have there's clips around each one of these brake lines that you have to kind of pry those things down I mean they're out of it now but you have to pry those to get that to come down and then if you move this clip that's right in there hope you can see that that clip right there moves over and by moving that over the whole thing will open okay and so once you get this one loose this clip on the side over here goes all the way over the top of those of those lines okay and so once once you get this open you can pull this down away and by uh, by lifting this piece up right here, it allows those lines to go sideways, and uh, they can come out. But I'm gonna have to take a few of other other ones open. But all three of these these clips on here open up like that, and so the lines can come out in this direction. Okay, there's a push pin right here that I'm going to take out that I hope will allow this piece right here to come down enough that will allow me to, to get that clip right here loose. Okay, so I pop that center part down and pull that out. Okay, I'm going to clean this out a little bit. Let's see if there's any hidden clips. Okay. So if you can see I've got that clip swung out of the way. And now it's these lines are free. Looks like they're all part of this package here that will come down. It looks like there's a sleeve uh, over that, so it's probably a heat shield. Okay, so there's another clip here and another one right here. Uh, they're the same style. Actually, no. This one's different, but this one over here is the same style as I showed you before, where I opened it up. And this one, it looks like they just push in. Uh, so we just pry this out and pry that out. And those lines should come up. So here, this one is loose now. And maybe if I move this a little forward, you can see those. So you just have to spread, spread these apart get them get those lines out of there okay so I pried those two out of there and now we go up around the bend and I think there's another clip up there so this one here is kind of in a really tight spot it's the same style as the first one so I don't think trying to film that when I keep trying to get that apart but it looks like it's the same clip kind of right there and you see that right now. But, uh, anyway, right up in there, same kind of clip, but it's got a swing, so I'm not sure how that's going to work out. Okay, so I was able to stick this small screwdriver up in there 
where that clip is and it came down uh, somewhat it's still the brake lines are still in there so uh, but that seemed to to make it move just sticking a little dinky screwdriver a little skinny one with a longer blade on it okay many different sizes of screwdrivers <laughs> prying on the brake lines and prying on the I was sticking my screwdriver in one of the slots down there that would fit. It was also helpful. Anyway, just keep working at it and prying and eventually we'll come open. Okay, so pull that clip off over there. And you gotta get a tool that looks like this to slide up in there. And release that thing that holds that on there and this should just come off like that so no no gas up here here's the paper line it looks like it just has this white piece that you push towards the camera okay so yeah I just had to fiddle with that a little more and it just comes off like that and that white piece just slides like that to release it and I put a cover over that just to keep anything from falling in there so now these lines I think there's still one more clip back down in there Okay, and to get to this last clip here, you got to pull this radiator hose back. comes out from the firewall, and it just hooks right in front of that clip, and it swings towards the front. Like that. And it's probably a good idea to put a catch pan underneath where the gas leak was, because when you start jostling those lines around... Uh, some of the gas still in the line since now that it's open to the air it may uh, may drain a little bit okay so on the vapor canister or evap canister we have to take this one off this is the vapor line and then on the fuel filter we have to take this line going into the fuel filter and I think both of those, again, are going to require this tool to release. Okay, so, and this is back by the gas tank. There's one more of these fancy clips holding the lines on. Right here. Okay, so this thing right here is a screwdriver that I've got in that pocket for the release and then I'm going to take another screwdriver and pop this out there and I think that is the last thing to take loose okay so on this one on the evap canister there's this little green button and you probably can't see it move when I push it but it is moving just a little bit Okay, so that is indeed the release. I had to push on that with a little screwdriver, but it eventually came off. So that one's free. Now we just got to go after the one on the uh, fuel filter. And I'm assuming that is going to need this release tool. Okay, so I was having difficulty getting that. Getting this line to come out of the fuel filter. I'm assuming it's rusted in there pretty good. So I decided, well, I'll take this loose and then just remove it with the line and then you know make a decision on whether I'm going to be able to get that out or whether I'm going to need a new fuel filter. Might be a good idea to put a new fuel filter on there anyway. Of course, I broke the head off of the of the 10 millimeter uh, bolt that was holding this in there so 
I actually have it. I pulled it out of the slot there, and, and I have it worked around so it's on top of the slot, and it, go, it actually goes underneath there. But uh, so anyway, I was able to get this line off. Whoa! I have a I have a gas drip pan here, um, but that has two um, plastic buttons, the blue ones, on either side, and I just depressed those and wiggled it, and that came loose. That's one of them. There's actually two of these. I haven't got the other one off yet. Okay, so having some difficulty here. I uh, disconnected the electrical connectors here, and it's just a matter of pulling this tab back and another one of those tabs. So there's three, three connectors right there with. Uh, those tabs and this one has a little tab on the canister and this right here has a couple of broken wires on it and I haven't figured out how to get that connector off of there looks like there may be a release tab right there on the top of it moves down a little bit okay well, I am not sure why I had so much trouble getting that off. Um, it was the... Actually, there's two different sizes here. One is the larger one, and the larger one is the one I had trouble getting off. Um, so anyway, what I ended up doing, first I cut the cut that with a hacksaw. Um, so, I mean, it wasn't any really creating any sparks and it doesn't look like there was any gas in that part of the line anyway so uh, but it worked for me can't necessarily recommend it but um, and then what I did here was I took a couple of, of nuts and just used electrical tape uh, to my on my pliers and then I was able to apply enough pressure to both sides while kind of rocking it back and forth and it finally came off but uh, it was definitely an ordeal I don't know maybe I just have weak fingers but that's how I was able to do it okay so the first cut we made in the old lines was right here and uh, the way we did that was we put a, a uh, kink in the line this wouldn't cut all the way through it it's a it's a bolt cutter uh, but we just put a kink in the line and then we took uh, took some channel locks and put it on the, on the line right here and we were able to to work it back and forth at that bend line that we put in there and eventually it broke and so the idea is we'll we'll do that as we need to to get these things the the biggest problem at the moment is is trying to get it out of the, the heat shield tube here if we can uh, if not we may just have to cut the heat shield tube I don't know but we'll make that decision later okay and when we did cut the the other line the gas line uh, it did leak some, so it's a good idea to have a have a catch basin uh, handy. Okay, and so by freeing that up, uh, that allowed me to slide this uh, heat shield sleeve forward enough, uh, and it's exposing more of those lines back there. So 
and we'll decide where to make the next cut. Okay, we slid that uh, heat shield as far forward as we could, and then we went ahead and cut cut the line right here. And this time we didn't use the pliers; we just used the the bolt cutter and just moved it back and forth. That actually worked better <laughs> than the pliers. Okay, so I got that rear heat shield that went around the bend here. Uh, exhaust pipe's coming around. There's a sharp 90 degree bend right here. And the reason that thing was so hard to get off of there was there's a little clip uh, holding those two pipes together that was inside there. And so that is what made it so, so hard to move. Once I got it clear of that, it just moves back and forth pretty easily. It also seemed to open up on the back side a little bit, which I probably ripped it. So, But at least it's free now, so I'm going to take these loose. Okay, so now I'm going to try to cut this somewhere in this area, both of these lines, and that way they should be able to slide out the other end because the other end of this has got bends in it. And so hopefully that will leave that on there. Okay, I rolled this around and I actually looked at it and it looks like it's just a piece of, uh, of aluminum tape, uh, adhesive back to aluminum. We're going to have to cut it off of there because the new line uh, won't go through it with the bend in it. <laughs> so we'll just have to uh, try to maybe get some more aluminum tape and, and uh, put it back on. Okay, so the next... Uh Next set of lines comes up all the way to here, so we're just mm -hmm. going to cut these off as close to the as close to the engine compartment, the frame member. However close we can get it, we're going to cut those off there, so that uh, we can hopefully pull the other section out from the top. Okay, I have the. The pipe's hooked up, and there's one over there, and so I've just got them loosely running up to the front. We snake them over the top of that emergency brake cable right there. Um, before <laughs> we hooked them up, obviously, and I found that. Uh, those joints back there were better if I left all of the connections for the hose over here loose. It was easier to get them lined up. So, um, And actually, we're not going to hook everything up until we go ahead and lake check it because if we have to go back and, and tighten those some more, it'll be easier if everything's not snapped in. Okay, this last piece with the black dot doesn't seem to be long enough. But then I noticed that this thing is just a push fitting for the hose. And so I'm thinking that probably what I'm supposed to do is take this hose from the previous one and cut it at the right spot and then just plug it into this blue one. That should give me enough length. Okay, so I... Uh, Used this piece and I hooked into that. I cut this piece off and then plugged it into that union down there. So, this all this plastic hose here was reused from the old, the old one. And uh, so, now we're going to check it, see if it'll run. And check it for leaks. Okay, so one note about this is this plastic piece here is falls right where these unions are. And this one fit okay because the union was on the outside. But on the other one, back in here, uh, the union is inside and it interfered with the plastic bracket so that this thing wouldn't close. So what I did was I just took uh, took a 
knife and cut it out un underneath that thing and I was able to get all of these clips closed that way. Okay, so wrapping up here, we when I got everything installed, the, the fuel filter did uh, kind of come back more into where it's supposed to be um, just because of getting all the hoses lined up or the pipes lined up. And over here, I wanted to mention that um, for the heat shield, what I used was um, some Velcro-based uh, heat shield material that I got. And, you know, because since I had to cut the other material off um, and I couldn't find any aluminum tape to put it back on, I just got this... Uh, uh, heat shield material that has Velcro attached to it, so it was much easier to, to put on there. And uh, I think I got like a three foot long piece of it, and um, it wasn't cheap necessarily, but, but I was able to get it around this section. And then, okay, so here's another view of the sh heat shield. Uh, you can see I doubled up this piece to get around everything and it goes up there and that's where the brake line for the passenger side I'm uh, sorry for the driver's side wheel comes off and then it goes up and around the bend ends up over there